Chapter 4 Try the Spirits 1 John 4 verses 1 to 3 Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Try the spirits whether they are of God, since we are dealing with a tribulation period book, we need to look at this passage in that same light. During the time of Jacob's trouble, there will be many false spirits that will be extremely active, because Satan will know that he has only a short time left on this earth before he will be cast into the bottomless pit. Just as God sends out 144,000 missionaries into the world, Satan will send out many spirits which will mislead people who will become the false prophets spoken about here in the last days. The believers will need supernatural help at times to determine if what they are experiencing during that time is an act of God, or whether it is one of Satan's many deceiving spirits that will be prevalent in those days. They will need to try the spirits when there is any question as to their true source, and the means by which they will be able to do that is with what is their confession concerning the Christ, is Christ come in the flesh or not? During this present dispensation of grace that we now live in, the devil can't do many things because he has been restrained in many ways that he was not restrained during the time of Christ's first appearing. This restraint will be lifted, and things will be much the same as they were 2,000 years ago, before the dispensation of grace was ushered in. Demon possession especially in and around the nation of Israel will once again be prevalent in that coming time, which will necessitate the need of God's people to have power over these devils as they did during the time Jesus and the apostles ministered. Ye have heard that it shall come, what is that that shall come? That spirit of Antichrist, that John said was already active in his day. 1 John 4 verses 4 to 6 Ye are of God, little children and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you, than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error. Greater is he that is in you, than he that is in the world, Jesus Christ is in the believer, the spirit of Antichrist is in the world. The believing remnant in Israel is called little children in John's writing consistently. The they and them referred to here are the children of the wicked one. Those that know God and are abiding in his truth will know when someone is speaking if there is truth in their message or not. Those that no longer abide in the truth will not be able to understand the truth anymore. 1 John 4 verses 7 to 8 Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Let us love one another. Love is sacrificing for another person. Real love can only come from God, who showed us how to love by his own example of the cross. When a person understands that love and receives God's gift of love in the tribulation period, they will have the capacity to love others as Christ first loved them and they will be sons and daughters of God. 1 John 4 verse 9 In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. God sent his only begotten Son into the world, Jesus was begotten of God as his Son at his resurrection, not his incarnation. Acts 13 verse 33 God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee. 1 John 4 verse 10 Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. The propitiation for our sins, God sent his only begotten son to be the all-sufficient sacrifice for us, not because he saw how lovely we were or were capable of being, but because he first loved us. 1 John 4 verse 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. We ought to love others as God loved us. Sacrificially, 1 John 4 verse 12, No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. His love is perfected in us. This means his love is made perfect in us when we share the love of Christ with others. When Christ dwelt among men, Israel beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, but no one has seen him in all his glory. Israel saw him veiled in human flesh, Peter James, and John saw him transfigured, but one day we shall see him face to face. 1 John 4 verses 13 to 14, Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. He hath given us of his Spirit, 
The Jews saw and did testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world because he gave them the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. You do not have the Spirit given to you today as Israel did on Pentecost, and you know it. They were baptized all with the Holy Spirit back then. See Acts 1 verse 5. We are baptized by the Holy Spirit today into the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. 1 John 4 verses 15 to 16, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Again, the litmus test for saints in the tribulation period will be, what do you think of Jesus? Is he the Son of God? If they confess him at that time, he will never deny them and will reward them that love him. 1 John 4 verse 17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Herein is our love made perfect, made complete. The day of judgment, this is not referring to a future judgment day by God after the tribulation period, but rather to one or many times in that period when a believer is challenged by the world to renounce Christ by word or deed. If a person wants to continue to abide in Christ at these times, they have simply to ask God for the boldness to endure it and then stand for Christ regardless of the consequences and eternal life will await them. But if they turn away from God, he cannot not deny himself. 1 John 4 verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. If I doubt God I will fear, but if I have confidence that God is who he says he is, and Jesus is his son, then I have the perfect love which can only come from God. Perfect love casteth out fear. Perfect love is literally stronger than fear, because God's ways are better ways than those of the devil. 1 John 4 verses 20 to 21, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar, for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. If a man sees his brother hungry or thirsty, and he has the means to relieve him of his suffering, and he does not, the love of God does not abide in him as Christ taught his disciples while he was here the first time. Believers will need to depend on the love and generosity of other believers during this time. When you have the love of God abiding in you, and you see your brother or sister suffering, it is not so hard to see how God has blessed you and how you should. Bless them. The importance of this will be magnified a thousandfold as the world is engulfed in the tribulation period, and God will require this attitude of his followers in that time. They will be expected to share what God has given to them with those who have not. Chapter 5 The Victory That Overcometh the World 1 John 5 verse 1 Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. Born of God, a Jew both in Jesus' day, the 69th week of Daniel, and in the future, the 70th week of Daniel, have to believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. If a Jew said that he loves the Father, but rejects the Son, then he does not truly love the Father, because the Father has revealed his Son to Israel, and they rejected him the first time. They will have a short time, seven years, to get it right the next time. Those that do accept him as the Christ are born of God, him that begot, God the Father, him also, that is begotten of him, Jesus Christ. 1 John 5 verse 2, By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God, and keep his commandments, and keep his commandments, the measuring stick for loving the children of God in that great and terrible day is that they love God and keep his commandments. What commandments? Believers today are not under the Ten Commandments. We do not keep the Sabbath day holy. We don't even give the real Sabbath day any thought because it is a day given to the Jew and not to the church, and it's Saturday, not Sunday. God never changed the Sabbath day to Sunday. John mentions loving the children of God because it will be important for believers in that day to care for one another during the time of Jacob's trouble to stay alive. Those who allow other believers to die or to suffer around them when they have the means to help them do not love God, and they will not obey him, so they will suffer the consequences. 1 John 5 verse 3, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Again, this is not doctrine for the dispensation of grace being espoused here. You have to spiritualize almost this whole book to make it for us today under grace. The law will be in effect for the Jew during the tribulation period, and the Jew will be required to live by it. 1 John 5 verses 4-5 For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, 
And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? The victory that overcometh the world, what is it that helps these people overcome such a terrible time? Their faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. John 16 verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Revelation 2 verse 7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The Jews during the tribulation period will need to overcome taking the mark of the beast. They will have to overcome the intense persecution of the Antichrist, the hunger, the wars, and the famine. Some think it is mean for God to force the Jew during this terrible time to be under the law again, but his commandments will not be grievous for them. Remember that many of them are still trying to live the law unsuccessfully today in the dispensation of grace so it won't be much of a change for them. 1 John 5 verse 6, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. He that came by water, this is a powerful statement of the personhood of the Holy Spirit. Impersonal forces, like gravity, cannot bear witness to anything, because they are only a force. No force can ever be considered to be truth either but it could be said about a person. Not by water only, but by water and blood. Blood and water came out of Christ's side at his crucifixion when a soldier with a spear pierced his side. It is the spirit that beareth witness. John, who is the author of five books of the Bible, said something concerning Christ's death about water and blood that have some similarities to these verses. John 19 verses 33 to 35. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. John said that he bore witness to the death of Christ, and that at his death, both blood and water proceeded from Jesus' side when it was pierced. Why is that important that John bore witness to this? Because the Old Testament was ratified by blood and water and the New Testament had to be ratified by better blood and water. Hebrews 9 verses 18 to 19, whereupon neither the First Testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats, with water, and scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book, and all the people. 1 John 5 verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And these three are one. This verse is missing in many versions of the Bible. Quit reading those versions. It is interesting that the verses that have important doctrinal truth in them seem to be the ones that are always deleted or changed. I wonder who is behind that. This is by far the best verse to use to explain the Godhead, which is that all three persons of the Godhead are God. They are co-equal, and at the same time, they are all one. The word, Jesus is God in human flesh. If you take this verse and alter it, then Jesus is just a special guy, not God. 1 John 5 verse 8, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. There are three that bear witness in earth. John here compares the perfect heavenly witness of all three members of the Godhead in verse 7 with the earthly witness of himself in verse 8. Verse 9 tells us that verse 8 is the witness of men. John 19 verses 34 to 35, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. While many have tried to explain verse 8, by explaining away verse 7 as not even belonging in the scriptures, we hold the witness of God above professing believers, who attempt to explain them away. 1 John 5 verses 9 to 12 If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. He that hath the Son hath life, the life spoken of is eternal life, as seen clearly in verse 11. The witness from God is that if someone wants to have eternal life with God, they must believe in the name of the Son of God, because faith in Jesus, and Him alone, bestows eternal life on those who believe. 1 John 5 verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, 
and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Believe on the name of the Son of God. Notice that a special emphasis is placed on the people at the time of the tribulation period concerning the name of the Son of God. The Antichrist will exalt his name and his number at that time, and to claim that Jesus is the Son of God will be considered treason at that time, punishable by death. 1 John 5 verses 14 to 15, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. This is the confidence that we have in him. This is another verse which has been misunderstood because of people's inability to rightly divide. Today, many people become frustrated when they ask something that they believe is in accordance with his will today, and then they don't receive what they asked for. In that day, believers who ask in accordance with God's will have whatsoever they desire of the Lord. But today in the dispensation of grace, it is not so. We are to always ask for things in accordance with God's will in any age but there is a greater need for those of that soon coming age. Where sin does abound, as it will in the tribulation period, grace will much more abound. The gifts that many continually and unsuccessfully claim today will be in full operation during this future day. How many millions of sincere believers in this dispensation have tried to name and claim things that are promises for Israel in the tribulation period? They have become confused and lost faith in the word of God to be able to do what it says. Many, there is no problem understanding the New Testament however when we rightly divide the scripture and correctly determine what is for this present dispensation and what is for the next. 1 John 5 verses 16 to 17, If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, who is talking? The Apostle John, one of the twelve apostles to the nation of Israel, the circumcision. Who is John talking to? His brothers, fellow Jews, not to us. He, and the rest of the remnant of kingdom believers shared some things that no one in the dispensation of grace has ever experienced. Hebrews 6 verses 4 to 6, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, and had tasted of the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. We like to think of the little flock slash remnant as Old Testament saints, but the Old Testament saints didn't have their same experiences, neither were they baptized with the Holy Ghost as were these people John was addressing. The majority of Christendom wants to make us equal to these first. Century Kingdom Saints while many who rightly divide the word of truth want to place these kingdom saints under the Old Testament economy, and they were different. The Old Testament prophets inquired and searched diligently to look into the things that these kingdom saints saw and experienced, but they were not the same under the same program. The Old Testament prophets prophesied about the little flock and what would befall them. They were not the same, and the Holy Ghost did not operate the same in both times. Therefore the little flock was held to a higher standard than the saints prior to Christ's coming to Israel. No Old Testament saint would dare say he didn't sin, but in the next verse in this chapter, we read that if someone sinned, they were not born of God. That sounds like what will be going on during the kingdom, that the little flock got a taste of those powers to come. Because of the time period the remnant lived in and what had transpired with them, they were held to a much higher standard than saints in earlier days prior to Christ's day. We in the body of Christ are not held to these same standards. Israel is the focus in these verses, and in this book, and while Israel was still under the law, at this time the believer was under an even stricter set of rules regarding a soon coming kingdom. There were sins unto death in the Old Testament and sins that could be forgiven through repentance and sacrifices. Since the remnant were not able to offer sacrifices anymore, they found themselves needing instructions from the twelve about just how to operate in the time they found themselves. What happened to Ananias and Sapphira were interesting examples of sins unto death in this time period. They lied unto the Holy Ghost, and they lost their life for it. Remember what happened shortly after this, when Simon wanted the power of the Holy Ghost, so he could give it to whoever he laid his hands on? He begged Peter and James to pray nothing would happen to him because of his sin. That doesn't happen today in the body of Christ. They had to endure unto the end. Hebrews 3 verse 14, For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. We must remember that when the rapture occurs, the dispensation of grace and the mystery program will have ended. The prophecy program will be back in force, as the focus turns back to Israel, and its soon coming kingdom, and king, 
and things will go back judiciously to how they were when John penned this epistle for the little flock in his day. This book, all the books from Hebrews through Revelation, will be very pertinent books for that future flock of tribulation saints. There is a sin not unto death. What is meant by this is that other sins can be forgiven when they are confessed by these tribulation saints. But if they take the mark of the beast, they cannot be saved. 1 John 5 verse 18, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Is that you? Are you born of God? Do you live a life of sinless perfection? What is John talking about? The correct question we should ask is who is John talking about? And two, he is talking about a future group of believers who will be given a special grace. This is a glimpse of what it will be like when Jeremiah 31 verse 31 is totally fulfilled and God's laws are written on believing Israel's hearts in the kingdom. This is not talking about us today. 1 John 5 verses 19 to 21, and we know that we are of God, and the whole world leath in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God, and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. What possible reason would a Jew in the tribulation period have for an idol? There will be an image set up as the ultimate test of Satan for the Jews just like the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. All that will not bow to his image, nor take his mark, will be enemies of the state, and they will be slated for extermination. At the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, all of Israel will be saved, and there is no way Satan or his crowd can get around that because, it is written, 